Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the latest in a series of webinars we've been holding for some years now. Uh, today's webinar is called the, the Introdu Introduction of the Viga 2620LN Dual SIM road Router, uh, a new product we're really, really excited about. And uh, we certainly hope that you, our dealers, will be uh, selling lots of these when you get to know the full capability of the product. So I'm Julian. I head up sales and marketing for Draytech UK and Ireland. And joining me today is Joe DC, our senior technical account manager that's going to be taking you through some of the technical aspects of the product. So the agenda is as follows. So we've allowed an hour for this webinar. I think we'll be talking for around about 40 minutes, which allows us for sort of, you know, 15 or 20 minutes at the end to have that kind of Q&A and catch up session. So I'm going to start off by just doing a quick intro reminder on the Drotech product range, just, just so you know. Uh, what else we do and where this product fits into the product portfolio. Uh, I'm not going to take too long on that. And obviously, the main part of this presentation is all about the 2620. So we're going to talk about the features, uh, the key differentiators in the product, some of the management capabilities. And Joe, at the end, is just going to introduce the cloud management facility we've got uh, that will enable you to uh, not only manage this product, but also other Draytech portfolio, should you so show, should you so require. And finally, at the end, we'll have this Q&A that I mentioned a little bit earlier on. So just a kind of few highlights. We've, we've reached a few milestones over the last year. Uh, we believe we've got over a million products sold in the UK now and over 40,000 companies using Draytech products. It's increasing all the time. Very proud of winning PC Pro Best Router Brand of the Year nine times out of the, 11, nine times out of the last 11 years. So very, very successful in that. The consumers seem to really like the products. And we've had a really big uptake in our ACS, our central management system, with over 600 companies and dealers now using it. Great SME market share and lots of Draytech devices increasingly in use with BT. Um, so we've really come of age over the last two to three years. We've got great presence in the UK. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll see why with, with the products uh, sort of range increasing all the time. So I'm not going to kind of read all this out, but we get great, great accolades from our, our, our customers. And, and generally, uh, individuals will say they like the product because it's easy to use, really good for business, very, very reliable, got all the features we need at an affordable price. And what we try and do is provide products and solutions that help businesses exploit the full potential of the Internet and, and mitigate against the nasties. Internet can be very unreliable can be insecure, can be difficult to control, and hopefully in our product range and solution sets, we try and mitigate uh, against that for, for all our customers. So now we're going to kind of move on to the solution sets to sort of give a bit of context before we get into the Viga 202620LN product set. So many of you will be familiar with this. Uh, we have an extensive router range. Uh, we pride ourselves on offering business class uh, routers or internet gateways, and we use this term business continuity quite a bit. Kind of why is that important? Well, many businesses are completely reliant on the internet. Uh, lots is going on. They're doing e-commerce. Uh, they may have various cloud services, be it VoIP or hosted servers or something like that. And obviously, the key thing is there: you've got to have a good, reliable uh, internet connection. If you've not got that, these systems simply don't work. So the flagship product there is our Viga 2862 series. Uh, the one we're showing there is our is probably our, our all singing, all dancing one that also has the 4G combined. Uh, very various different iterations of the product, as you can see on the left. And uh, on the right up there, you can see this sort of SIM card slot availability, which we're going to be talking about when we get into the depth of 2620. But essentially, with this type of device, you can connect to pretty much any broadband service that's available in the UK, whether it's ADSL. VDSL, Ethernet WAN with you know fiber to the premise or satellite or other type of Ethernet sort of terminated services, 4G, and interestingly wireless WAN as well, where you can piggyback on the back of somebody else's Wi-Fi network to get internet connectivity. So this is a very, very successful range, done us good and proud for many years and is as strong as it's ever been. A little bit further up the scale, we have some higher end firewalls. This is really all about concentrating more VPNs. So this is kind of, a, a, I suppose, a headquarters central site type concentrator. Much higher throughput, um, four, four, meg four megabits per second plus, and we're you know kicking on to gigabit speeds now on some of our some of our uh, higher end products. Uh, 
features multi-WAN capability, so you can connect up to four ports simultaneously, four WAN ports simultaneously on our 3220 multi-WAN device. So not time to go into this in any great depth today, but in addition to the sort of business class routers, we've got this higher end range of firewalls, which might be interesting to you for sort of concentration uh, of multiple remote sites or maybe for a larger head office type requirement. We've also featured this quite recently with our new AP903 mesh uh, wireless access point, but we have a nice comprehensive range of access points now uh, delivering uh, reliable and affordable managed wireless to all our customers. I think our biggest customer has got now in excess of 4,000 access points up and down the country. Uh, really great for large implementations of wireless across multiple sites and also for large implementations on single sites. Uh, we, we, we have some sites with over 50 access points uh, creating a, a complete single managed wireless environment for, for guests and also, also company users. So you can see the, the types of devices there. We've got the ceiling mounted sort of smoke alarm style 910C and the more traditional kind of wall mounted devices. They come in a, in a, a range of uh, features and costs uh, and together form uh, yeah, this managed wireless service that we offer. Uh, yeah, don't forget all, all the, mesh, the mesh capability with the 903. Uh, and also you can see this um, sort of smartphone in the middle there. Uh, we've now introduced a smartphone app that enables you to set up mesh mesh uh, very, very simply. So check other webinars and other details out for that type of solution. Uh, we also got um, an increasing range of switches uh, from, from the 8 port right the way up to 48 port. You can see we've got a 12 and 24 port now. So we have these in unmanaged versions, fully managed versions, those that support P and those that don't support P, don't support POE. So probably we're in a, you know, a better, as better situation as we, we've ever been with this range. And when you add the whole lot together, we've got hopefully business class routing. We've got all the access points you require for managed wireless. And now we've got the switches that connect it all together in different shapes and sizes to shoot, suit all sorts of all, all types of environments. So the range very much uh, expanding and becoming complete. And this is all wrapped together with management. So you need to check with each router, because each router is slightly different, but essentially with a Draytech router, you can manage your router, you can manage your access points, and you can also manage your switches. And there's a new um, sort of interface on, on the management interface when you go into a router that does all that. You can see VPN, APA switch, external devices there, and so on. So check the routers. Uh, some of them have got a lesser or greater capability, uh, but it's really all about delivering um, the complete uh, networking solution set for small to medium sized offices all managed from a router and we're going to be covering this in a little bit more depth today um, the bigger picture on this is our central ACS management system uh, which is a, a licensed product that's either hosted by us or you can take the license yourself and install it and manage your own networks but essentially through this you can manage all the devices that Draytech provide, whether they're routers, access points, and switches, in a whole raft of different ways. And you can see on this diagram here, you've got Google Maps support for a topical, topological view of the network. You can monitor traffic, see what devices are on board, have a high-level view of the network, see who's using it, rollout firmware, rollout configuration, a host of other things as well. So if you're not using ACS, take a look. It's, uh, it can be free for our dealers on, on the cloud version. And again, Jeb will be extolling the virtue of this a little bit later on. So anyway, that was a kind of uh, whistle-stop tour of our organization, you know, some of the um, great accolades we've got in the marketplace, some of the usage, and also just a reminder of the different product sets we have available. We're now going to move on to the main um, form of this presentation, which is the 2620L new product sorry, 2620LN, uh, the new product, and we're going to cover all the features and benefits right now. So that's a, a kind of look, look at the device. It's similar style to the 27 sort of 100 series, which many of you may already be familiar with. Uh, standout feature here, as well as all the excellent, excellent kind of routing and, and business class features, is this 4G uh, capability with a dual SIM slot in the back of the device for mission critical connectivity. So that's kind of a, a look at the back of the device. I'm, I am, we are going to expand this a little bit more depth, but if you look at the, the outside um, sort of two 
uh, sort of sockets there. Uh, those outside devices, which is kind of number 16 on this list down there, that's that's the, the socket that you screw the LTE or the 4G antenna into. Uh, you can actually extend, there's a, there's a special extension kit which enables you to extend uh, this by a kind of meter, so you can use a cable on that to extend that area and kind of move it to an optim optimum position. You can also use industry standard aerials with this as well if you wanted to, you know, put, put, put the aerial in, in the loft or something when the route is in the basement. So that's kind of the aerial. The wireless element is actually all within the router, so the aerial is stored within that. You've got various interfaces. Uh, interface 10 is the DSL traditional broadband connection. Interface 11 there is the dual SIM card slot. So you can see there are two slots for two SIM cards there. 12 and 13 are the LAN ports. Uh, actually, one of those you can also use for a WAN, which I'll explain a little later. You've got the on-off switch and you've got the power supply, and that's pretty much it. Factory reset and a, and a wireless LAN on-off as well. So that's the back, back of the router. Fairly straightforward, not, nothing particularly scary there. Probably the things you'd expect. So let's just talk about some of the features now. So I've mentioned earlier on that the standout feature is this ability to have a dual SIM uh, connection to 4G or LTE networks. Now this is ideal for a number of different environments. The sort of, I suppose, one of the classics might be pop-up broadband, which is what I've kind of featured there. Um, and this might be useful for a number of, number of reasons. You know, we're moving uh, our business into a particular area where maybe there is no ADSL or VDSL right now. There's long lead times. So I might want a device that gives me 4G broadband right away, pop-up broadband. And as and when the ADSL, VDSL becomes available, I can use the same device to connect to that. But you can have environments where 4G is faster and cheaper than traditional broadband. Funnily enough, I live in one of those areas myself. Cannot get ADSL or VDSL for love nor money. Other services seem incredibly expensive, and actually 4G is probably the best for me. Um, so that actually works quite well. And you can also have environments uh, where broadband is really not served at all and is not likely to be served in remote areas. Uh, we're seeing quite a, uh, a growth in what, what, what's called the M to M market or the machine to machine market, where you may have a utility by building like a, like a water pumping station or something, where you want to pass telemetry information regularly back to some central site. Again, this type of solution set is ideal for that. Uh, you can see at the top there, this supports uh, really pretty high speed for, you know, compared to the LTE available um, speed. So 150 megabits download, 50 megabits upload. So pretty fast for this um, type of environment. Uh, and also to say that this is, um, it's, it's an open SIM card, so you can put any SIM card slot, you can put any network in there. So we'll support all the popular networks, EU, Vodafone, O2, 3, etc. Uh, so you have kind of full flexibility of what to use. So yeah, it's a pretty good, I'd say. Nice and high speed, uh, very flexible. Uh, can be can be a real get you out of trouble type product or one that's really ideal for those areas where you don't tend to see the traditional broadband. So I'm just going to talk a little about a bit about another feature now. This is really the backup feature. So this is where you might want to use the um, product when you may get you know irregularities on the traditional terrestrial broadband or maybe broadband failover, uh, broad, uh, broadband that fails. So you know it does happen actually quite often. Sadly, uh, if if you don't get broadband failover you, f failure, you can often get. Um, interruptions in service where it's running particularly slow or something like that. So uh, the failover solution set is really quite useful. It kind of works a bit like this. So obviously you would put your SIM card in the back of the router or in, in this case you may want to put dual SIM cards in place. We have a situation where broadband circuits is actually working very well, sort of denoted by that uh, green dot you've seen kind of up and down the line. Then you get some sort of uh, break in service could be for whatever reason and what will happen with this particular product is this automatically invokes failover mode so in other words the sim card connection is fired into life because the router will detect the main broadband connection is, is failed and then what will happen is that this uh, broadband 3g connection will then take take on the load and will run all the traffic for a period of time uh, once the 
broadband connection, the traditional broadband connection comes back into life, the 4G will drop and you go back to normal operation. So seamless transfer from traditional broadband to 4G and back again without any manual intervention whatsoever. Now, interesting, there's quite a lot of management information flying around when this takes place, which I'll, I will explain a little bit later on, but absolutely seamless. So, you know, fantastic for environments where it's mission critical to be connected all the time. You know, I can think of many, and we just use the example here of a retail outlet that might be doing point of sale transactions. And that, you know, that particular outage on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday, you know, in top of training could actually really, really help and save the day in terms of uh, keeping connected and keeping the business running. So that's uh, a little bit about 4G, how you might use it in a couple of ways. I also want to talk a bit about the terrestrial broadband compatibility as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that on the far left, you've got a DSL port. This is um, sort of self-sensing -sens dual personality, so you can plug an ADSL or a VDSL connection into that and it will uh, connect to either either one automatically. Uh, important to say this is also, this is also um, BT uh, modem compliance tested approved. So this has gone through Marflesham Heath Labs and been fully tested with VDSL um, circuits, so you, you can be sure of a good connection when you connect to that. But more importantly, if you do get issues with the service uh, and you've got this MCT approved device, it means you'll get full support from BT to rectify a problem. Very, very uh, important to check that one out uh, for any router you're going to connect to VDSL. So this has a maximum 300 megabits throughput, so that's going to eat any VDSL service that I'm aware of and you know, will, 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 will keep you connected at high speed with whatever um, speed the DSL service uh, kind of is. So looking further to the right, you can see the yellow two LAN ports there. These can be used as LAN ports in, in the traditional way, but interestingly LAN 2 can also be configured to be WAN presentation as well as uh, LAN. So this could be really useful for a fibre to the premises service, uh, satellite service that terminates as Ethernet or maybe, maybe any other Ethernet service as well. So quite useful to have, um, gives you another option in terms of connection. So just to expand on the on the gigabit LAN support, uh, you've obviously got the two gigabit LAN ports there. In this scenario here, we've connected an eight-port switch. Uh, in this situation, we're, we're going to say it's uh, one of our eight-port switches. I think on on the uh, diagram there, it's it's a, it's a 1080. Uh, it could be a, a 1092, which is our PoE version of that. Uh, and because this also supports VLAN tagging, uh, you can set up sub subnets and have the concept of a uh, a kind of guest network uh, which completely bypasses all the office systems and would just go out onto the internet so again you could take that stage further and attach uh, an access point to that through the PoE that access point could serve for any guests in the office that just want to get access to the internet uh, and the other the other ports so denoted by blue uh, could be could be the office network and obviously with the use of VLAN VLAN tags you can take that to a stage take that a stage further so lots of flexibility for LAN segmentation using VLAN tagging and what have you in a wired or wireless format to give full flexibility for a typical small business. We also support VPN so many of you will know our products to be. Uh, yeah, the way to do VPN uh, you know, between remote sites. So the scenario A there at the top is using the Viga 2620 at a branch office or maybe a, a home worker. Um, they're using it for a raft of reasons, but uh, they can VPN back to head office. In this particular example, we've got the Viga 2862, rather, which I featured right at the start of this presentation. That can sort of terminate up to 32 VPN tunnels. Uh, you can use the branch office with a 2620 LN for up to two VPN tunnels going through to head office with a fully encrypted service. That's quite handy. And then at the bottom, you could use the, the 2620 as the sort of um, small office device and then have teleworker links from where, wherever they may be in the, in the world again securely across VPN to that central that central device. Uh, I've kind of featured there our smart VPN client, which is relatively new, um, very easy to use, um, can be loaded on, on a Windows or Mac PC, and using that you can make that, that SSL VPN connection back to the central device. So another another useful feature of the product. 
Yeah, when I spoke about uh, broadband failover, especially, I mentioned there's quite a lot of management information flying around. And this particular feature means that the router will make full use of the cellular link that you've got in place in, as a result of the, uh, the 4G cellular, cellular connection. So this link can be used to uh, use very simple text commands from a smartphone to look at data usage, look at IP addresses being used as a kind of uh, you know, quick view on what's going on on this particular device. It's highly secure with a pin code, so only specific devices with specific knowledge of the pin can get access to this. All the message sent, messages sent via SMS are stored on the router, and you can further use the feature in the router to email these messages wherever you need. So, for example, you may want uh, a kind of email automated process to be set up to a network manager or maybe you as our dealers uh, when a particular uh, line fails. You may want to know that a line has failed and that 4G has been invoked, so maybe you can take corrective action. So that's really quite useful there. Uh, I think you can see there on the, on, uh, as an example, on, on the smartphone, the sort of information that can fly backwards and forwards. And so the final feature here is the central management to control. As I say, Joe will be talking about this uh, in the next kind of section, but you can go into the management interface on the 2620LN, just like any other Draytech router, take control of things, uh, look at what's going on and so on and so forth. But we'd advise all, all our dealers and all our users to take a good look at the ACS central management system. This enables you to manage uh, 2620s, our complete router access point and switch range from a central standpoint. And is, uh, the, the, there is an option that's free to all our dealers called ACS Standard, which again, we're gonna be covering a little bit later on. Uh, so there, there are a couple of options here on ACS. Uh, you can buy the license yourself and install it or in your, on your own server in your own environments. And that certainly works for some of our very large installations where you wanna take control full control of it and throw whatever resources you require at it. We also have this hosted on our Draytech cloud system where all you simply need to do is subscribe. We, we do all the heavy lifting, uh, we, we host the server, we give you the logons and you can just keep on sticking devices on as, as you wish. Uh, again, we really recommend you take a, take a look at the ACS standard version, free to all our dealers, and you can manage up to, up to 500 devices as, as a result of, of logging onto that, which is completely free. So I think I'm just about starting to run out of puff now, and I've uh, hopefully given you an overview of what this product is all about, where it fits into the into the product set, and also told you a little bit about the management system. I'm just going to temporarily mute myself. Uh, my colleague Joe is now going to come in and take you through some of the technical features on, on the product. So uh, I'll be with you a little bit later on when we do the Q&A, uh, but just give me 30 seconds while I hand over for Joe, and he'll uh, take you through the next step of the step of the webinar. Okay, we'll see you a bit later on. Hello everyone, this is uh, Joe DC from uh, Draytech UK and this morning I'll be uh, going through the 2620LN product um, looking at some of the key features of that device and also taking you into some management options for that unit as well. So the Draytech Viagra 2620LN is a product um, that you will see has many familiar um, features across many of the other Draytech models. Um, so please take time to actually review which, the, which features are available on the product because we will not be able to unfortunately have enough time to go through all of them on this webinar. But there are some key features um, such as VPN, firewall, bandwidth management that you will find are common across some of the other models and you'll find are very familiar. The some of the uh, nice features that this product brings, as Julian has mentioned in some of the earlier slides there, is the key WAN failover uh, functionality that this brings, and also the dual functionality of those dual SIM card slots on the device as well. So let's go through some of the actual configuration options on the device that actually makes use of those dual SIM card slots. 
So this is the 2620 dashboard. So quite familiar screen there for those of you that have used the Dre Tech routers and Dre OS before. And on the screen, we can uh, clearly see the actual device itself. Um, we can see which ports are in use at the very top on the dashboard there. See the firmware version that's being used and the firmware build. And also we can see that this product supports two LAN subnets. Only one of them is currently in use here. Um, we can see in the central section of the screen, we have LAN 1 there, uh, the current default 192.168.1.1. Just below that, we also can see the WAN connectivity details on this product currently at the moment. And we can see that the WAN 1 DSL port is actually in use. And it's actually connected to a VDSL line. The, the modem has auto-detected that type of connection uh, that it's been used. Also on this screen, you can see on the right-hand side, we can see the LTE status. So this device, although it's using WAN 1 and it's connected via WAN 1, we can see that that is online and has a, an uptime there of just over 19 minutes on this screenshot. The SIM card is actually connected to this device and is ready for failover, which is uh, going to be very useful um, to a site if they, if they need an always on WAN connection. So let's look at the uh, next screen and the next screen we're going to go into is the WAN configuration on this device. So we have WAN general set up here and we can see as we had the overview on the dashboard, we can see the actual configuration that's been applied to this unit. We can see that WAN 1 is, um, it will detect the, the type of uh, connection. Uh, this was taken prior when it was actually on an ADSL line there, but we can actually see the active mode there is always on. This is the primary WAN connection in this current status. And we have LTE as the failover option. Um, now the actual port 2 on the Viga 2620 can actually uh, be dual personality, so it can even be a second LAN port or we can enable that port to be an Ethernet WAN port for different types of connections to that unit. So in this case we have primary as WAN 1 and failover as LTE. Now, in the WAN Internet Access screen, um, the WAN 1, WAN 2 configuration details will be much the same as it would be on the other products you've used before for DreTech in DreOS, but the LTE configuration now will be slightly different. This will be a, a new feature that's been brought to this product, which is that dual personality SIM card slot. And we have the SIM 1 and SIM 2 configuration settings here. And you may identify that there is a different APN name details for the configuration of SIM 1 and SIM 2. So in this example here we had um, SIM card, SIM cards from different um, SIM card providers, so from the free network and also from EE, so we're using their APN names there. Um, but obviously you can use the, the same SIM card from uh, the same provider just for a failover in case uh, there's any issue with um, one of those SIM cards or you potentially ran out of credit on one of those pay as go SIM cards that was being used. So that's the configuration on the actual 2620 that is slightly different to what you might have seen before. Um, and let's now take a look at the actual um, online status physical connection screen. And we can see here, again, we can identify WAN 1 is currently in use here. And the at the bottom of the screen there, you can actually see um, we've got the sync speed for the WAN 1. And LTE status is not currently connected. Although the, the device is aware of the SIM card, um, it's ready for that failover status because of the configuration that's been applied. And this next screenshot here is when WAN 1 potentially has an issue, disconnection on that line, and the LTE status has failed over. So very, very good uh, products for providing WAN failover functionality and ensuring that there's always a WAN connection available at the site. So now we've gone through the actual web interface of the router, let's actually have a look at this product, the 2620LN in Viger ACS. So this is the same device that we were using in the previous screenshots, and we can again see a summary of that device here in the main screen, the, the actual router model, the firmware version, MAC address and its uptime. But also on the right-hand side there, we've got details of the WAN connections in the central part on the right-hand side of the screen. We can see again, WAN 1 is in use in this instance, and when the failover occurs, 
we can see that WAN free is available. And on the right hand side there, you can just confirm as well what the active mode is um, of the WAN connections. WAN 1 is essentially the primary for this site, it's the always on WAN connection, but that WAN free LTE connection was the failover in this instance. You also have the option of applying pretty much any of the configuration that's supported on this router through Viagra ACS as well, the central management tool. So here we can see that we've expanded the configuration menu on the uh, 2620 LN that we've selected, and we can see all the menu options that you would normally see on the actual device itself. So it's uh, structured very similar, so it's easy to navigate. And we can see that we've actually selected the WAN configuration here, and here is just another view of how you can actually configure those settings for SIM1 and also SIM2, potentially those different APN details. Okay, so that's really covering the uh, Viga 2620, um, the key new features that have come out there, the dual SIM um, availability on that device, allowing for failover between WAN connections and also failover between the LTE as well. If, if SIM 1 was to go down or there was an issue with that connection, the device would fail over to also SIM 2 and you'd have that additional resilience there for that connectivity. So now we'll go into a bit more depth about Viagra ACS itself. So if I bring onto the screen here, this is the login screen for our uh, test demo Viagra ACS server. And Viagra ACS is uh, the central management solution for managing all of your Draytech estate out there, uh, all in one uh, single point of management here. So when we log in, this is the uh, dashboard for the Viagra ACS2 service, and we can see that when you first log in, you're at, provided with, with the landing page of the root network, so the root network dashboard, an overview essentially of your entire estate. And we can see in the uh, top section here, we have the root network, and we have the child um, networks beneath that as well. So we have company A, B, and company C there. So different networks. The configuration of this is up to you if you have um, a ACS service that allows you to do that. And you can design that for how it best suits your needs. But in total, we can see that in this ACS, there's 11 devices that are online. And out of those 11, there's actually currently one alarm here, one device that is offline. This network dashboard is very useful because it gives you an overview of the number of clients that are connected to these devices and also the amount of bandwidth that's being used per network as well, as we can see in the bottom right hand corner there. Another view that's available to us is the device dashboard as well. So if I go into one of these devices here, let's expand the networks, and we can see some devices that are registered. We can see that there's the Viagra 2862 LAC, if we select this device here. And this is a device we can see that the dashboard changes based on us selecting an actual device itself rather than the network. And we can get more details on this product itself. So we have the dashboard, the front panel essentially at the very top. So it's very easy to indicate which ports are in use. Um, and if, whether it's a fast ethernet or a uh, gigabit ethernet connection based on the uh, color that's indicated. So green here is for gigabit. If it was for orange color, it would be fast ethernet. We also have the device information uh, displayed in this section here. Again, very useful to know um, the actual firmware that's using on that device, the actual uptime of the device. Has, it, has the site had any power issues? We could quite easily identify that there. Uh, just to the right of that as well, we can see that the DSL information, the upload and download sync speeds available on that line, which can be uh, very good for uh, diagnostics. And Further to the right hand side, we get more details about the WAN connectivity uh, available on this site. So this particular 2862 here has actually got two active WAN connections uh, currently running. This dashboard gives a real good overview of the current configuration that's been used at the site and 
potentially the number of um, wireless clients that are being used as well. So here we can see we have wireless station overview. We have on this particular router, we have um, SSID created on 2.4 gigahertz. And there's actually one client connected to that SSID here as well. So we get a good overview about the configuration and how this device is being used at site and also the amount of bandwidth that's being used. So ACS really gives you great visibility and monitoring of all the devices on your estate and between different networks, which is great. Um, one useful item is the alarm section. So if a device no longer communicates back to the ACS server, then ACS generates an alarm. And you can be notified of this via an email as well. Uh, but all the alarms will always be available here. So these are the current active alarms. Out of those 11 devices, there was one device that was offline, and this is the device here. We can get details of that device and actually see when that alarm was generated. Should the power be restored to this device or the WAN connectivity be restored to this device, at that point, the device will communicate back to ACS and actually clear this alarm automatically. So the device will be online again, ACS can manage it, so there's no need for that active alarm. But you can also always get the history of any active, uh, any previously cleared alarms via using that history tab there and actually get a bit more detail. See if there's actually you know potential issues at certain sites if you have repeated uh, alarms for certain devices, which you can actually search for by a device name um, or MAC address there. So really quite easy to do that. So a really good way of monitoring what's happening with your estate. Are they all available? Are they all up and running? Is every site, does every site have their internet access and, and can continue their day-to-day -day operations? Also in terms of um, monitoring uh, what's happening on the uh, devices, we can also look at the actual logs as well. So ACS will record all the logs for these devices. Um, any any activity that's um, completed via Viger ACS, ACS will record that. And we can see we've got the user ID, uh, my login here, where there's some couple of changes that was done for these do, two devices. And we can actually go into those and get a bit more detail about actually what was changed um, for these devices. So there's actually a, a new device name added to this. In addition to that, what you can also see is you can see details of not only what is changed through Viger ACS itself, but you can also monitor what is changed from um, on an actual device. Potentially someone's logged in locally to a, a router or someone's accessed it remote, remotely via remote management and they've made some configuration changes. Then, now this is something that you can actually get um, be made aware of using Viger ACS. Here we can actually see a CPE notify log, which is really very useful because um, we can see that there is multiple configuration changes on this device. And we can see the types of changes here. So there's web change. Any web change is a configuration change that was done within the web interface itself. And ACS will report back the specific menus where the configuration change was made. So if you suddenly find that there was, uh, you know, the, changes to the network environment, you know, potentially uh, routing issues, and you were to go into ACS and you potentially find that um, there is a firewall change, a firewall menu change uh, made at some point during that day, then that gives you a quick indication there of what actually potentially has changed and which menu to actually go and look in and, and review the current settings on there. So here we can see there's a number of changes and also we can see logins as well. Um, ACS will record successful logins and it will also record any um, failed attempts as well. So potentially you might have um, someone trying to access a device, uh, a router remotely um, that, that's uh, not, authorized, not authorized and you can record the actual IP address of that. Um, there's obviously tools in the Draytech routers that uh, help prevent that, such as brute force protection and access lists for management, but th these uh, types of informative logs are really very helpful for monitoring your estate. Okay, so that's the actual monitoring and logs. Now we'll look a bit more into actual configuration options that we have on these devices. So let's go back to this uh, router here. 
as we've seen in the earlier screenshot for the 2620, when you're actually in a device, uh, managing a device, selecting a, a device that's in ACS here, we can actually expand the configuration tab and actually go through any of the available menus that are on that device here. So whether it was to be uh, creating a, a new LAN subnet or modifying the existing one, we can easily go in there and actually make those changes right away. Doing these types of changes is essentially like being on the router itself, the web interface, and saving a change here will immediately apply that change to the device. Just to mention as well um, that all the Draytech range support TR069. TR069 is the management protocol that ACS uses to be able to manage these remote devices via this uh, portal. And not only the routers support that, but we also support this on the uh, Draytech switches and also on the Viga access points as well. So just very quickly here, we've got a Viga P1280, which you can see. This is the device here, and it's actually um, behind the 2862. You can see how many ports are in use, how many ports are providing PoE. So great for managing the switches as well. And also we can uh, manage the access points as mentioned here as well. Again, we'll be able to see if there's any wireless uh, SSIDs created, how many clients are connected as well. So as well as the configuration being applied individually to units here, we can actually do configuration via ACS, which actually rolls out changes to multiple devices at a time as well. So that's actually provisioning. So we can do provisioning, create global parameters, and these global parameters essentially are uh, tasks for ACS to actually roll changes out to maybe one, 10, 100, as many devices as you would like ACS to apply these changes to at a time. And the benefit of the global parameters as well is when you actually create these global parameters, we can actually specify a, uh, a time and date of when these profiles are actually rolled out and which devices they should be rolled out to as well. So it's, it's real um, control there of making changes out of our changes, uh, changes at specific dates that customers have requested. In terms of maintenance, uh, very quickly, uh, the firmware upgrades are available via ACS as well. You can actually upgrade the devices individually in the configuration menus like we were doing going through the menu of the router at that time but we can also do scheduled firmware upgrades as well which is really very useful for um, creating firmware upgrades and apply making sure your state is upgraded on the latest firmware again we can specify this at scheduled times of day so that there is no outage for the site when the upgrade is applied because the reboot would need to uh, take effect once the firmware has been successfully deployed so again a very useful uh, tool uh, in acs is uh, uh, locker there for actually um, managing your estate as you can see here as well, we have uh, scheduled backup profiles that we can create, so we can always make sure that we've got the latest configuration files that are on those units, um, and we can do things like scheduled reboots as well. Okay, so one, there are two other features that I'd like to mention about ACS uh, before we uh, move on to the end of the presentation. The Next section that I would like to just uh, show you is moving on from the provisioning area that we spoke of, that ACS has control of applying specific configuration changes, whether it be a DNS change, a Wi-Fi change, turning Wi-Fi on or off, uh, creating certain firewall rules. This is something ACS can roll out to multiple devices at a time. Building on from that, we also have a feature called uh, auto provisioning that ACS can provide. So essentially what we have is we can send uh, Draytech units out to a site and those devices, once they get powered on, once they get connected to the internet and have some form of route and path back to the ACS server, as long as that configuration, that limited configuration is on the device itself, the device can communicate back to the ACS server. The ACS server will have a network for that specific device to be populated into and, and for authenticate correctly to this ACS server. 
there will also be details on that server of the specific configuration that needs to be applied to that unit that has just connected. And ACS will do that by actually identifying the MAC address of that unit, and which will be a unique uh, verification of the unit, and roll out a specific config for that site. This can be new TR069 details, so it actually populates into a totally different network um, for management thereon. New WAN configuration details, so that the correct WAN IP address is received. New LAN configuration, a change of admin password, and any other site-specific configuration that is essentially required. So this is quite an advanced uh, feature in ACS. Uh, it's used generally a lot for uh, large rollouts. Um, but if this is something of interest, then please get in touch with us and, and we can discuss this with you more. So this brings me on to the last section that I would like to discuss and very useful is getting reports of your current estate as well. So there are two forms of reports that we can do. We can create a report uh, instantly, essentially go into the me menu for ACS, generate the report, or you can actually schedule report task, which is what we have on the screen here. So regularly you can have potentially every Monday morning, email to yourself and many other members of your team, certain information of the estate whichever will be useful, whatever that information is that will be useful to you. So some examples of the reports here are the firmware overview report. So we can see what the estate is, what the current firmware version, uh, and also shows the actual WAN IP address for that device as well. We also have, uh, for example, a detailed device information overview report. This again brings the firmware, brings the WAN IP, but also some additional uh, information such as that MAC address and which network that that device is registered to. And finally, a very useful report is a device configuration report. So this is actually a method of ACS, when instructed, will contact selected CPUs that you want to act, um, get details from, so those remote devices out there that are registered to ACS, and specifically request current values in the configuration of that device. So here we can see there is two models. There's a 2762 and also a 2862 here where we've requested the same values, but they're grouped. Uh, we're getting information of the model name, the MAC address, firmware, the uptime of that device. We're getting the LAN IP for LAN 1. We're getting information is the DHCP server enabled and we're identifying if there's any specific DNS servers um, configured on that unit as well. Here we can see that there's uh, some specific DNS servers on this specific device. So really, ACS, they're a great tool for uh, managing the state, having visibility, monitoring, making changes such as firmware upgrades or configuration. And also here we can see very easily we can identify what the configuration is on that estate as well. So thank you for your time. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Julian, who's going to actually do a summary of the uh, webinar and also go over some Q&A as well. So thank you very much. OK, well, that's, that brings us up to 11 o'clock. That's exactly an hour from when we started, like we said we would. Uh, so what I'll do is just, first of all, thank, uh, thank uh, Joe for his excellent sort of technical overview, which we hope you all uh, found useful. Alex, thanks to you and the team for busily responding to all those chat messages that came through. And I know there were quite a few there, so thank you very much for that. Uh, for all of you listening, thank you very much for uh, spending time in your busy day to be with us. Uh, we hope you found that useful. And uh, we hope that will persuade you to maybe start positioning this new product in some of the scenarios you come across. So thank you very much. Have a great day. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar sometime soon. So bye for now. And we'll see you soon.